Mr. Speaker, I rise here in this moment, in this House, as our generation faces its greatest challenge yet. We all stand on the shoulders of those who came before us, of all those Canadians who saw our nation through difficult, tumultuous times in our history. Il y a 103 ans aujourd'hui, des jeunes soldats canadiens se trouvaient dans des tranchées en France, à des milliers de kilomètres de chez eux. Le lendemain, ils prendraient d'assaut la côte 145 qui participerait à la dernière bataille de la crête de Vimy. Aujourd'hui, à l'aube de ce sombre anniversaire, nous nous souvenons de leur courage et de leur sacrifice. Nous nous souvenons de ces soldats qui ont façonné le pays que nous connaissons aujourd'hui. Twenty years later, many would send to be sent to the front again. On the evening of November 14, 1940, my grandfather, the young MP for Vancouver North, rose in his seat to speak to the war effort, but first thanked all those senior members who allowed him to speak before them because his leave from the RCAF had expired that night and he was to ship out soon. Jimmy Sinclair would spend the next three and a half years in Europe and North Africa, far from his young family, far from his work in this House of Commons, and far from his constituents in British Columbia, serving his country in the best way he knew how. He would return to the chamber in early 1944, a mere few months before D-Day, to exhort Canadians to continue with the sacrifices and efforts required to win. This is the year which will decide a rapid victory or a long and protracted war, a year when our fighting men must be given every conceivable aid and support and encouragement by every man, woman and child in Canada, no matter the personal cost. These were trials that shaped our country and more, our citizens. And now, once again, we are being tried. But Mr. Speaker, this is not a war. That doesn't make this fight any less destructive, any less dangerous. But there is no front line marked with barbed wire, no soldiers to be deployed across the ocean, no enemy combatants to defeat. Instead, the front line is everywhere. In our homes, in our hospitals and care centers, in our grocery stores and pharmacies, at our truck stops and gas stations. And the people who work in these places are our modern day heroes. Separated from their family, risking their own health, they head to work every day so that we can eat, so that we can heal, so that we can do our part. Because every one of us has a role to play in helping shield our country from the threat it now faces. In hard times, courage and strength are not defined by what we say or do loudly in public, but by the actions we take quietly in private like staying home. Even as we stand apart, we stand united in our resolve to do what we must until COVID-19 is defeated. Monsieur le Président, nous sommes ici aujourd'hui pour faire adopter la subvention salariale d'urgence. Il s'agit de la, la politique économique canadienne la plus importante depuis la Deuxième Guerre mondiale. Cette subvention va permettre aux Canadiens de garder leur emploi et un chèque de paye pendant cette crise. C'est ce sur quoi nous voterons cet après-midi. Cette subvention s'appuie sur les démarches déjà entreprises pour venir en aide aux Canadiens 
comme l'offre de prêts garantis aux petites entreprises et la prestation canadienne d'urgence pour ceux qui ont perdu leur emploi. Encore une fois, dans cette Chambre, nous sommes appelés à soutenir ceux qui sont dans le besoin et je sais que nous ne les laisserons pas tomber. Mr. Speaker, as Canada confronts this crisis, we are all called to serve, to fight for and alongside each of our fellow citizens, to fight for someone's mother, for someone's grandfather, for someone's neighbor. Our job as Canadians is to uphold the dignity and sanctity of every single human life, whether they be rich or poor, young or old, ailing or healthy. That is our duty. Without reservation, without pause, we must fight for every inch of ground against this disease. We must be there for one another as we spare no effort to safeguard our collective future. Au cours des prochaines semaines et des prochains mois, nous ferons face à de nombreux obstacles. Nous traverserons d'autres moments incertains. La peur et l'inquiétude continueront de faire partie de notre quotidien pour la plupart d'entre nous. Et malheureusement, nous pleurerons ensemble la perte des nôtres. Même si nous prenons toutes les précautions nécessaires, la situation risque de s'empirer avant de s'améliorer. C'est la triste réalité à laquelle notre pays est confronté. Notre détermination à en finir avec ce virus, notre engagement à veiller les uns sur les autres, seront mis à l'épreuve. Mais je sais que nous sommes à la hauteur du défi devant nous. Canadians are among the most fortunate people on earth. Despite the challenges we have yet to overcome, despite the wrongs we have yet to right, ours is a country where we look out for one another, where we take care of each other. The generosity of spirit and compassion, this was alive long before this virus reached our shores, and it will survive long after it's gone because it is who we are. Monsieur le Président, notre pays est en deuil. Trop de familles ont perdu un être cher en raison de cette pandémie. Cette maladie est d'autant plus cruelle puisqu'elle nous empêche de se rassembler pour pleurer la perte de ceux qui nous ont quittés et de célébrer leur vie entre amis. Et famille. Au nom de tous les Canadiens, j'offre mes plus sincères condoléances à ceux qui ont perdu un proche. However, this holiday weekend also marks the coming of rebirth and new life. Easter is a time where Christians honor the passion, sacrifice, and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth and his teachings of compassion, forgiveness, and love. Passover is a time when Jews recall the covenant made by God with the people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, and the heroism of Moses, who led his people from bondage to freedom. Vesaki is a time when Sikhs and Hindus celebrate the new year and the spring harvest. And even for those who are not celebrating, spring is always a time for renewal. These moments remind us that love, courage, and fortitude are the antidote to despair, that there is no challenge we can't overcome together. So let us make a solemn promise to each other this weekend to do just that. Durant ce long week-end, prenons un engagement entre nous de faire ce qui s'impose aussi longtemps qu'il le faudra. Et dans cette Chambre, faisons notre part pour remplir cet engagement. Prenons nos responsabilités 
et venons en aide à ceux qui sont dans le besoin. Mr. Speaker, as I stand here today, I think of the young men who died taking Vimy Ridge. I think of the greatest generation who grew up during the Depression and fought through World War II. They showed us how to fight for what we believe in and how to sacrifice for what we hold dear. Today, across this country, the last members of this greatest generation live in nursing homes and long-term care facilities. They're in their small apartments and the homes they built so long ago with their own hands. They are the ones most threatened by this disease. They fought for us all those years ago, and today we fight for them. We will show ourselves to be worthy of this magnificent country they built, and for them and for their grandchildren, we will endure, we will persevere, and we will prevail.